This is Eye on the Community, and I'm your host, Sean Anthony. To, uh, you know, the day after Thanksgiving is known as Black Friday and traditionally kicks off holiday season spending. But the truth is, we have been bombarded with advertising already that ignites spending. And that means, despite supply chain sh shortfalls, there remains plenty of opportunity to build a financial mess for ourselves the next coming weeks. That is why today we've asked Homeport Senior Advisor, uh, Senior Housing Advisor, Mr. Layden Hale, to provide some tips on what you can do to have a financial sane period of gift purchasing. I want to welcome to our in the community, Mr. Layden Hale. How are you today? Fine, Sean. Thank you for having me on your show. Absolutely, my pleasure. Now, as I uh, indicated, we're we're here to talk about holiday spending and and providing some tips on how not to make a financial mess of ourselves. But before we get into this, uh, let, our, let our listeners know um, about Homeport, how long you've been with the organization, um, how long the organization has been in business and whom does it primarily serve? Okay, well, I've been with Homeport almost 15 years now. Um, I'm a senior housing counselor and um, Homeport is a nonprofit housing organization. And we've been around now for over 35 years and our mission is to provide safe and affordable housing to our communities. And we do this in a, a number of different ways. Um, every night we have over 6,000 people who go to bed in one of our facilities. We rent apartments and houses. Um, we are a small developer. So we also build affordable housing. We build apartment complexes um, and houses for rent. And we also build some for sale. So again, our, our mission is to provide safe and affordable housing. That, that's on the, uh, on, on the development side. We also provide educational classes for people who are interested in purchasing a home. Uh, we do financial literacy for people who want to uh, uh, improve their credit and who want to uh, improve their budgeting skills. We do home buyer education classes. And, and at home buyer education, those classes, they help to demystify the housing process because you know nowadays people can get can be taken advantage of if they don't know the process mm -hmm. and uh, we also do for people who own homes we also provide foreclosure prevention counseling and you know during this you know last couple of years there's been a lot of hardships that people have had and so you know some people are, are at threat of losing their homes to foreclosure so what we do is we negotiate with the mortgage companies help keep people in their homes for people who already have, who are, you know, if, if they're having problems with their, with their uh, mortgages. Okay. So we do a lot. Yeah, that, that's, that's very informative. Um, I understand you have this monthly video cast. It's called Ask Laden. And mm -hmm. this month you're talking about holiday season spending. Which, what percentage of the year long spending comes this time of year? You know, um, probably the, 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 majority of the spending is going to happen over these next couple of months. You know, people spend a lot of money over the holidays. And my job is to help people, you know, uh, to, you know, have a nice Christmas, but also stay on track for purchasing that home. You know, um, sometimes when I, when I first started doing this, Sean, I felt like uh, I was the Grinch because I write, I write these, um, um, you know, things every year to help people, you know, stay on track for, for the holiday so they don't overspend. Because one of the things they'll do, they'll, they'll turn around and overspend. And then the, in, in January and February, when I meet with them, they have that, that overspending hangover saying, I can't believe I spent all that money. Right. right. And, then, and then it takes them, you know, three to four months to, to just pay that back. And it puts them and, and it throws them off track for, you know, for preparing to purchase at home. So I felt like a Grinch sometimes early on by telling them don't spend as much, you know, don't, you know, this Christmas don't spend that much money. But you know, after a couple of years of talking to people and them coming back to me saying late, I didn't spend that much. So now I'm, I'm on track. I can buy my house by June of this year. It started making me feel better. And because the people who listen, you know, stay on track. And, but but it's hard to it's hard to stay on track when you're in that Christmas spirit, that holiday spirit, where you want to give and give and give. Mm. And so you know if you if you want to purchase that home next year, sometimes you just got to kind of cut back a little bit. 
real quick, I just want to chime in. What do you, what's, what's a piece of advice that you would tell a client, you know, how not to spend, how not to, you know, splurge on your family or your kids or uh -huh. anything like that. What's a one piece of advice you would tell somebody like that? Well, you know what? Um, I, I really have three. Okay. One is for the, for the holiday season. I say, number one, come up with a budget this year. How, how much you want to spend and not a budget on based on what you want to give, but come up with a budget on what you can afford to give right now, you know, because with this COVID and all this other stuff, you know, a lot of people, our incomes have been impacted. So come up with a budget of what you can afford to, to do. Number two, I say, um, uh, you know, basically shop with cash. If you got a budget shop with cash, because I've learned that you tend to spend more money if you use a credit card. You don't feel that pain because you know what you know. You and I know if you know when you go out and you spend you know hundred dollars, and you know you feel that. But when you if you spend one hundred and fifty, you know with a credit card you don't feel it. So right. it's easier to do. Not and then, right, not right away at least. <laughs> no, no, no. You're gonna feel it in February, January, February. Right, right, right. Eventually. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And then the third thing, and, and I think the biggest thing to answer your question is this year, consider uh alternative gifts. Mm. And you know, and so when I say alternative gifts, I'm talking about um sage. Well, actually, it's the gift of love. Uh, okay. <laughs> it, Some because, incense. Yeah, yeah. Gift of, but but, but it, it, because a lot of times we don't have the money right. that we spend, but we spend it anyway because we want to give. Yeah. So the thing is, this year, do alternative gifts. Give somebody a, a card, and in that card, give them a picture. You know, you and your brothers and sisters, you got some pictures of when they were, and, and they haven't seen it in 20, 20, 30 years. Right. That picture means more to them than you going out and buying them something that they're not going to use anyway. Yeah. Or, everybody, everybody in my family getting sage, incense, and $5 crystals. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so it's going to help them in the long run anyway. But, I'm but just teasing. I'm thing. teasing. <laughs> Think about this. Another thing. Give a card, and in that card, put a little coupon in there and say, coupon worth one day of babysitting. And so your sisters can, and, and her husband can go out on the town and don't have to worry about a babysitter. That's a good, that's Give a good idea. Give your parents a, a, a Christmas card and then it say one gift, one, one day of yard work, or I'm gonna help you clean, you know, and, and give that because that's worth more. Mm -hmm. Sometimes giving your time. Or if you're in a big family and you, and you know, Lots of times people have big families and, and they got they looking at buying a Christmas present for everybody. And you know I can't afford that this year. Plus, I'm trying to buy this house. Mm -hmm. So now what I could do is try maybe do a gift exchange this year. Let's draw one name. That's what our family, we've been doing that. That's a tradition in our family. It, we, it because because, because we have a big family. We, mm -hmm. we have a huge family. How, so how does it work for you? It works fine. And we all set a budget. It's a budget, you know, nobody can go over, you know that said budget and we do the exchange names and you know we've been doing that for years since i was a kid so yeah and know, everybody's happy everybody's happy you know Layton, what's what's new this year that we need to know about on the topic of holiday spending is it different from last year you know when we were locked down uh, are there different uh, different uh, uh, circumstances yeah yeah you know what Sean? it seems like for the last two three years every holiday season, something is impacting us. Last year, it was a coronavirus, you know, and um, people, you know, for whatever reason, it was the cash, it was, it didn't want people didn't want to get out and around. So there was a coronavirus last year. This year, it is that um, supply chain slowdown. And what, 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 what what's happening is they're saying that the materials are not going to be there. Uh, the gifts are, you know, the, the, that you want to get, they're not going to be there. The shelves are going to be a lot more empty. Um, some people say that because there's not as much uh, inventory, the pricing is going to go up. So there's going to be, things are going to cost more. So um, this year, uh, you know, to, to prepare yourself, 
I think a lot of people should start to shop earlier. Don't wait, you know, don't wait for them Black Friday sales. Don't, you know, try to start shopping earlier to get the gifts that you want, you know, instead of what's left over. Uh, another thing I would say is um, uh, shop online. Because, you know, this thing about going to these different stores, you know, because you might wait and, and, and there may be a Black Friday sale where there used to be 10 of them, now there's only two of them. You're going to wait in line for three hours only to find out it's not there. So shop online. And then by shopping online also, it allows you to, to compare prices before you buy, you know. Right. And then so, but I would say definitely shop early, shop early this year, you know. Excellent. How much do American consumers spend annually during the holiday season? Um, it's, you know, um, they say every year it goes up. Now, last year, I think it, it, it went down. Um, so, um, but I, would, I think they're saying, you know, the average person is going to spend about $1,000 uh, on, on the holidays. That's the average person. Now, you know, some people are going to spend more, some people are going to spend less, but um, I would say it's, if you are in the, in the process of buying a house and you have to keep, you know, everything, your, your debt to income ratio down, you got to keep your, uh, you know, your spending down to keep your credit down, you can spend money. And that's why I don't want to be the Grinch, you know, the store of Christmas, you can spend money, but make sure it's in your budget. You know, right. if, if the average person spend a thousand dollars and then you do your budget this year and you say, well, okay, this year, I only want to spend 500. Well, spend the 500, you know, mm -hmm. and then next year this time, the, the, your Christmas present, you're giving your Christmas present this year of a house next year. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you stay within that budget, you can, you can kind of guarantee yourself you're gonna be in that house next year. But if you blow that budget, you know, that lender doesn't want to say, well, you know, I understand, Sean, that you gave the kids a good Christmas. So, you know, no, they think that the income ratio is a little bit too high. Come back when it's down. Right. What are some tips that you can share with our listeners on, on how to save money? That's, that's something that a lot of people have challenges with, mm -hmm. you know, is, is putting some money away. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but the, the first thing, that I tell my clients to do is to do a budget. Now you do that budget because you want to make sure that everything is that's in front of you is paid. I want to pay everything on time. That way it's going to build my credit, you know? And then I also know how much money I have left over. Okay, when I do my budget, if I could, if most people do their budget and they'll say, well, Layton, I have $500 left over, you know? But I really don't have 500 because um, if I had that kind of money, I'd be doing a lot better. Well, it's $500 on your on paper. And they're saying that if you follow that budget to the T, you would have $500. Once you realize that I got $500 left over, the next thing you want to do is do something with that money. Okay, mm -hmm. I would say take some of that money and come up with a debt repayment plan where I'm paying down some of my debt take some of that money and save every month. So let's just say you have $500 left over. Maybe you take $200 of that money and pay extra on your credit card or whatever you want to, you know, take $300 and save it, you know. Now, if it's $300 I'm saving, don't say, try to save $300 a month. If you get paid every two weeks, save $150 every two weeks and make it automatic, you know, because you don't miss it if you don't see it. Right. These are all the tips that I do. Now, one more thing I would share, share with you, and these are just little small tips. Um, you could do, a, a, you know, they, they say you save a dollar a week and then every week go up by, you know, a dollar. You know, oh, that's not a lot of money, lady. You know, that's right. Because and, and, and when I say that first month, it's a dollar one week, one, two dollars a week, you know, two, three dollars. I can do that. Mm -hmm. When you get into week 40, you gotta save forty dollars a week. It's harder to do, but if you get into that habit by doing something like that, at the end of the year, you should have about thirteen hundred dollars, thirteen hundred and sixty dollars, something like that. Well, if I start that in January of two thousand twenty-two, mm. 
Then, if the average person is spending a thousand dollars for Christmas for the holidays, next year I'm going to have one thousand three hundred sixty-two dollars. I don't have to put anything on the credit card. Right. You see what I'm saying? Well, some people say, "Well, late, I, I, you know, I can do that early off in the year, but I can't do it, you know, when I get to week forty and fifty. Well, you know, what? do as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Even if we don't ha- hit that one thousand three hundred, we got at least some money saved. And yeah, it just do like something. Happy. Just do something. There you to, go. To there add to go. to that, yeah, because it, it takes discipline. You know, one of the biggest things. One of the biggest things, and what in my job, they say personal finance. Finance is 80% behavior and 20% knowledge. Think about that. It's not, it's not knowledge, you know, people know what to do. It's just getting them to do it. So my job as a counselor is I do, we give you the education, we tell you the things you need to do, but also part of what we need to do is help you to try to change your behaviors. Because once you start to change your behavior, Attaining that goal, it gets a lot easier. But a lot of times, and one one of the things I will share with you is, a lot of times people just don't know what to do. If they, because, and when they come to home for it and we give them that information, sometimes they'll take that information and run with it. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, old lady, I just thought I needed a a 660 credit score. I I got a 670 credit score, I'm ready to buy a house. But they don't realize that that lender is gonna be looking at that debt to income rate. Right. Okay, Sean, what you know, you make good money, mm-hmm. but you spend good money. That they're gonna look at that debt to income ratio and say, hey, how much income do you have coming in and what is your debt? So what we do at home for it is we hope we try to get people before they get, you know, if, if they want to buy a house, come see us about a year before you want to buy. Because what we do is we give you that educational class, we do that financial literacy class. The lays the, found, the, the, the foundation. Once we finish with that financial literacy class, it's a two day, I mean, it's two Saturdays. Then we do a one-on-one credit and budget counseling session with you, where we go pull your credit and go over that credit report line by line and tell you what's on there. Then we don't just give you that, we, then we also give you an action plan. That action plan is gonna say, okay, Sean, if you do these things, then you're gonna be closer to ready to purchase at home. And nice. so people get the, the, the action plan they follow. So we don't just say, hey, you know, come back to us when it, you know, when you get these things done. We will follow up with you and say, hey, Sean, hey, you know, we have a, a meeting with you every month, every two months, and say, hey, how's things going? Some people need a little handhold. Some yeah. people take that information, that action plan, and run with it. Some people need a little action plan. And 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 the one thing I will share with you, I'm I'm, I'm real with my clients. Sometimes we fall down. Mm-hmm. Sometimes Christmas comes or with some COVID hits us. Something hits us and then we get knocked, you know, we get an option. Well, you know, we here to help you dust yourself off, get back up, get that action plan, and get right back into the game. So we, we put a lot of people in the housing simply by just working that that formula, you know. Excellent. You can tell I'm passionate about this because I keep talking about it. <laughs> hey, I, and, and but listen, that's that's good that someone like you with that kind of passion is in this type of position to be able to help people because I, I get it, man. When you're passionate about something, you'll your 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 cup will run over with with information and knowledge mm-hmm. to share with people. You know, I have a passion for teaching. I mm-hmm. teach part time, man, and and my students will tell you, you know, you know, Mr. Anthony, he's he's passionate. You, you're daggone right, you know. I, I want you to learn this, you know, but um, Amen. I, I can go on and on with you, but we're, we're running tight on time. Um, if, if some of our mm-hmm. listeners want to get in contact with you and more information uh, or, or schedule a meeting or, or what have you, uh, what, how, how would they, uh, uh, what would be the best way for them to get in contact with you? We, we got two ways. The, the, probably the best way is um, go to our website. It's homefortlearning.org homeportlearning.org and they can sign up for classes. We have free classes. Um, Or they can call us at 614-545-4895. I'll say that again. 614-545-4895. 
And uh, we have a, a, we have the free um, financial literacy classes. Uh, we and that's usually the uh, two Saturdays in, in in the month. We have free home buyer education classes. Um, the home buyer education classes are real good because once you get your certificate, most lenders want their uh, home buyers to have home buyer some type of home buyer education uh, education for their first time home buyer products that they're offering. They got a lot of good products, but they, 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 a lot of times they want you to have a home buyer education certificate. And then for people who are getting down payment assistance, they want um, most down payment assistance programs require you to have a, a home buyer education. And one of the things I can say is Homeport uh, administers one of the down payment assistance uh, programs for Franklin County down payment. Um, so, you know, we, we help with that as well. That's good to know. Very informative information. I want to thank you, uh, Mr. Hill. He is the Homeport Senior Housing Advisor, Layden Hill. I definitely appreciate you taking out the time to share this valuable information to our listeners on our community. Take care. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. You have a uh, happy holiday. Same to you. Thank you. Bye. Mm-hmm.